Today's the day, you guys have got your vehicle. Uh, we're now going to show you the rest of this video uh, on everything else on the vehicle. Uh, please, if you need to ask any questions, please don't hesitate. We'll be more than happy to show you. Um, and I hope you guys have a fantastic holiday. Welcome to Central Scotland Motorhome Hire. Uh, today I'm going to show you around about one of the motorhomes uh, and show you how to work it. I'll try not keep you here too long because I know you guys are excited to go on your holiday and I'm as quick as I can. Uh, but let's go and we'll get you shown around about. Uh, what you might find, this might not be your motorhome, uh, but all the motorhomes are equipped much the same. Uh, the toilet, the water and the electricity are all the same and so I'm just going to show you in this vehicle and your vehicle will be much the same. You might find the water might be the other side or further back but we should have water stickers on them to let you know it's the water. Uh, first thing you should do when you get to a site, uh, obviously it's pay your fees at the site and then nip to the water uh, bay uh, and fill up your water. Uh, it's the first thing you should do on site. Simply key, it's part of the ignition key, uh, turn and open it. Take the key back out, actually, which is really important um, because if you're filling up and you leave your key in here, the water, when it overflows, could run into the key and that's not a good idea because uh, your van might not start digging. Anyway, once you're connected up the other end of the hose uh, to the water uh, pipe at the site, we've got this wee system here to get on and off here. But what to do? Fire the hose in. It'll turn it round about to try and make the whole hose go in. It's a wee knack to it. There we go. Uh, so push it all the way in and then you can turn, obviously, the tap on. Turn it on here and fill it up and you'll know when it's full when it starts to overflow and obviously when it starts to overflow just switch it off at the wee top at the top of the uh, pipe here and obviously take the tank off put the cap back on and then lock it up okay second thing you get to do when you get to a site uh, is obviously get your pitch and once you get onto your pitch you need to level up uh, your vehicle. Uh, one of the things we do is we have the leveling chocks. Uh, they're generally located in these vehicles just behind the cab. There's a small box here and you open that up and you use these vehicles to get your vehicle level because you're not wanting to get eggs or anything or cups to start sliding off the table. So we'll get two of these and whether it could be this side or at the front or at the back, get yourself level and you're almost ready to go. Uh, secondly, or sorry, so I say thirdly, You've got the electric on site, uh, plug it in to the socket in your vehicle. Some of the vehicle sockets are actually at the other side, uh, at the passenger side of the vehicle. Once you plug this in, go to the box where the other end of the extension is and you might find there might be a wee fuse or a wee flick switch to flick, uh, flick the switch to its on. And how, one of the reasons you'll know it's on is uh, inside at the control panel it looks like a wee tulip and that, if that light's on it means there's electricity coming through the site. Now we've established we've got water, we've now got the vehicle nice and level, we've now got the electric on, uh, if you have electric uh, on your site, some sites don't actually have electric, but uh, pretend we're on a site with electric, so we've got electrics in, and now to get into the gas box to turn the gas on. Key in, give it a wee turn, and you can see it pops out, Turn the key again as if you're going to lock it and it just means it's easier to lock the cupboard uh, at the end of it. Open it up and then we go to the gas. Uh, in here at the gas, um, we have two bottles. Uh, we generally run the vehicles with two bottles. Uh, you, what you might find, there might, this gas bottle might only be quarter full. Um, if it runs out uh, during your, your vacation, simply change the bottles, uh, take the hose off here and put it onto here. Uh, uh, to turn the gas on when you get to the site, um, turn it anti-clockwise and that opens the, the bottle up and there's a wee lever here and that should be straight up and down and that means it's open, not letting the gas go through, straight up and down. To close it, that's it in the off position. So we're now at the site and that's you ready to go uh, uh, to get into your vehicle and get it up and running. Um, the other thing I'm going to tell you while I'm at this position just now, um, if you needed to change the gas bottle, this nut here turns clockwise. Uh, it turns opposite from a normal nut and bolt. So turn it clockwise, take it off, remove the safety cap here and the, your spare bottle, 
it also turns clockwise to so take this wee spare cap out, put the hose back on, uh, and that's and tighten it up anti-clockwise, and that's you got your bottles changed. Uh, one of the other things while we're here as well, um, never drive the vehicle with the gas on, even although you're moving at like 10 feet just to get your van level, it will knock your heating system uh, off and you might end up having to reset your heating system. So at this point, again, if you're going to turn it, turn it off, turn it off and turn it clockwise to turn it off. I'm now going to show you the toilet cassette. Uh, it's quite simple to work. Uh, put your key in, turn, push in, and push the top button and it opens up here. Uh, inside here you've got a cassette, it's a Tetford cassette. And inside uh, here we also put uh, pouches with the, it's like dishwasher tablets. Uh, you drop one of these into the bag, but I'll show you another one. Uh, anyway, uh, to take it out, uh, the wee lever under here, the wee blue lever, as I say, all the vehicles are the same. Uh, lift it up, and if this is stuck and it's not coming out, don't try and pull it out hard because what it means is the toilet is in the open position inside the vehicle. So you would need to close the wee flush, uh, and then this should come out very easy, just like that. As I say, and if it doesn't, you need to go inside and uh, close it. So we've now put the box out, uh, and to empty the box, turn it, turn it that way. Oh, it's a new one. Open it up, and on site you usually find there is places for uh, disposable, uh, disposable all the, the boxes. When you get to the, the disposable point, this wee button up here, push it in, and that lets air into it. And when you get to the disposable point, push it in and empty it out by simply just doing it that way. Uh, at, usually at the disposable points as well, there's usually a tap. Uh, put some water in it. Give it a flush about, uh, press the button again and empty it out. Uh, when, then when you get to that point, uh, use one of the tablets, drop one of the blue tablets from the bag into the box here and then fill it up probably with about a milk bottle's worth uh, of water. That allows the, the chemicals uh, to open the, bag, uh, the blue bag up and the chemicals go about. Give it a shake, good shake and put your cap on. Good shake and then put it back here like this. If you've got any distance to travel to go to the, the, the point uh, to empty, you have a wee handle here that just flicks up and clips in. And it's also in wheels as well. So you can take it okay. simply and it clicks right back in there. Uh, and that's you almost ready to go. These wee arrows I've got on here just now. It was just in case any customers found there was an issue with these caps. The arrows must point to each other, and as simple as that. And that go, that means that the, no, the toilet is ready to slip straight straight in. So again, just put this in in there, and then your, your bag of chemicals. There's usually a wee point inside there. Stick it in. And one of the most important things is the toilet cassette must be returned nice and clean. Uh, please. Uh, Fill it up with just the wee bit of water I was telling about and put the tablet in, uh, mix it up, keep it nice and fresh, but please have it nice and clean for us coming back because it's obviously for hygiene reasons, COVID reasons, etc. Thank you very much. The grey water is located behind the driver's uh, door on most of our roller tools. Underneath here, you'll see the handle and you just pull it like so to release the grey water, i.e. the shower water, uh, the sink water, etc. This has nothing to do with the toilet. It's just your dishwasher and shower water. And to close it back up again, simply push it back in and that's it locked in. Most sites have waste disposal uh, locations on site. Um, if you find that they don't have sites like that or you can't have access to um, offload your grey water, what we tend to do is once you're out in the road is pull that to release the grey water uh, and drive with it open that's what we recommend because that will empty your tanks and keep your your grey water tank clear uh, all our vehicles are actually fitted with uh, cycle racks uh, and i'm going to show you a quick explanation how to use them uh, what to do at the top is slacken these off a wee bit so that they can lift up at the back there, there's wee handles as well just turn them anti-clockwise lift these up 
lift them up and then you've got the red strap here and this is a wee extra uh, strap on just to hold things together uh, you've got to open up like this and then simply bring it down and you've got these on here press the red button here and it undoes same with the other side that goes through the, the, the wheel spokes stick it back through ratchet it till your cycle's in place uh, and depends what bike it is it's on the fourth one here with this one probably Pre again press the button here uh, and bring this out and ratchet it onto the frame of the vehicle the bike put the back in and click it in and that's it pretty solid uh, with each bike with, that, with each bike as you can see it's a four bike rack clip them all on and make them nice and safe and last of all again put the strap around the bike and the bike the bike rack itself and that's you and uh, to put it all back together again obviously take the bikes off back up and it simply clips in here clips in bring these down tighten them back up and that holds the cycle rack from the moving etc Tighten them all up. And again, you get the wee safe, extra safety precaution. Put the red strap on, and it comes, and simply buckle it through and ratchet it back up. And that's it, and then give it a wee tie off at the back here just so it's not hanging down, etc. That's you. All the roller team vehicles we have are fitted with these locks. You'll find them all round about the vehicle. So I'm just going to show you uh, how to work these locks uh, on this one. Key, it's on the key ring. Put it in, turn it and you'll see it's opened. But what to do is, when it's at this position again, just lock it. And that is you getting ready to, when it, when it comes to lock it. Down here, I'm just going to open this one up. And again, I'm going to lock it. But the vehicle, you can now open it, and the, the handle's popped out like this, you can now open it. That's your end. So close. Now that we've already locked it with the key, you just push it. And that's them all locked. I'm now going to show you the new control panel that's in the new motorhomes for 22 registrations. It's a new uh, trauma control system. It's uh, also by Roller Team. Now I've come into the vehicle and what to do is touch the home button. This screen will appear and then it should come onto this screen here. Now switches, first thing I want to do is actually have the light on. So press switches and I want the interior light on. And there we go, the lights are on. Uh, if we want the outdoor light on, just click it to on and it'll come on. Uh, once we fill up with water, then you turn the water pump on and you can open up the taps uh, and let the water come through. At first, you'll find it might gurgle with some air, etc. Uh, but obviously, you need the water pump on for the toilet to work and the shower to work and the sink, etc. To come back into the home screen, simply press the home button and that's us back uh, to here. Now, we're wanting a wee bit of uh, heat coming through the vehicle. So we're going to room climb it. Now, at this point, uh, You'll not really need the ventilating unless it's really it's summertime and it's really hot. That just uh, fans and brings hot air basically in from outside if it's hot. So it's basically a cooling system, but it's not that great, to be honest with you. The main thing you want here is the heating. So press the heating and you can see the temperature I've set the vehicle for this one is 22 degrees. At the moment, it's 19 degrees inside. So the, the heating system will fire up now because I've asked it to come on. Uh, to turn the heating off, you'll see a turn off up at the top here. You press that button on the screen. It's all touch screen. Um, if you're coming into the vehicle at first and it's really cold, you would press it to fast. And that means it's the fan will go faster to heat up the vehicle quicker. Uh, if you want the temperature to go down, simply press the minus button here and it drops it down. Recommended temperatures for going to sleep at night is about 19 degrees if you want to keep the heating on at night and it will just keep the vehicle 19 which is just a nice heat uh, for sleeping overnight. Um, as you can see I've already plugged in the gas and it's gas that I'm uh, asking for the heater to work on just now. But 
I can change that if it's an electric pitch that I'm on. I'll simply put the gas off and turn it to 1800 watts for the electricity. And as you can see here, as I say, gas is off and you're now on 1800 watt electricity. That's what most Euro, uh, UK caravan sites, etc., have. So we're in this screen. I'm going to go back the way. Uh, and as you can see, we're running electric. I can still hear the fan running away in the background. Um, and I'm going to come back to the home screen. Uh, on uh, warm water, warm water is switched off. So you're wanting warm water. Now it tells you down here, 40 degree, the degrees, if you want to heat it up to 40 degrees, that's ideal for doing dishes. If you want it to press it again, press plus, and it'll take it up to 60 degrees. And that's for a shower. There is one more you would maybe take it to is 70 degrees for a long shower. I wouldn't recommend taking a long shower because a long shower, trust me, you're probably lucky to get maybe seven minutes, eight minutes out of the shower, and then you'll need to fill the system up with uh, water again. Also, you'll notice up here, there's a faster heating option. Give it a wee click, and it's a faster heating for 40 minutes. That means that it'll concentrate uh, heating the water up. Um, on Back that. to the home screen. Simply press rewind or home and it takes you to here. Now the screen is touch screen. As you can see down here, uh, you can scroll across and it'll take you to next net X app, which is not connected. Uh, so don't touch that one. And settings, there's no need to go into the settings either. So I'm going to scroll back to the main switch and up here is resources. Touch the screen for resources and over here, that's your grey water waste, it's at zero, and the fresh water is at zero. Uh, once you fill up the fresh water, obviously this percentage will come up, and once you start using water, the grey level will come up as well. So it'll actually tell you when you're needing to empty your grey water. Over this side here, the top one, is your vehicle's battery. It's sitting at 13.1 volts, which is absolutely fine. And the leisure battery is sitting at 13.9 volts, which is absolutely spot on. If you're doing some wild camping and you're not plugged in to a caravan site, etc., keep an eye on your leisure battery. There is a solar panel on the roof that uh, should keep the battery topped up. Uh, it's really good solar panel and the batteries are really good at taking the charge as well. But keep your eye on that on this one. Uh, what you might find is once your leisure battery starts turn, turning, uh, running down, you'll get to a point where your televisions won't work. On the front screen again, you can actually see the number two is just here in green. And that means there's two switches on. That means it's the outside light and obviously the lights inside the vehicle. Up here in the top corner, you'll see it's at 20 degrees and you see the warm water's ready. Now, one of the most important things about the, uh, this system up in the very, very top right hand corner, you'll see a wee two pronged plug. Uh, if you're actually plugging in to a caravan site, always make sure that that plugs on. Uh, what we've found in the past is uh, people uh, or customers will uh, plug into site, but forget to actually turn the fuse on at the site and they can't get electricity, etc. But one of the main reasons and one of the reasons how you will know is if you plug it in, on site, the two pronged plug will appear up in the top right hand corner. Uh, over in the left hand corner, at the moment you can see we're on gas. It's the wee gas flame and that's what's uh, feeding the system just now. On the heating system as well, uh, you'll notice there's a green bar just across the top up here. And there's a green bar up here and a green bar at the switches. That means everything's fine. Tickety-boo, everyone's working fine in the motorhome. These bars can turn to amber and red when something's not working properly, i.e. the heating, that's the biggest culprit. And I'm going to show you in a wee minute uh, how we deal with faults. I've turned the gas off uh, on the vehicle uh, and just to let you know when the fault uh, picks up, the uh, things on the wee lights up here turn red, etc. So I'm going to go back to the heating system. As I say, I've turned the gas off. It's coming in as electric just now. Uh, because it's I'm pitched up to a site. So I'm going to change that and just uh, and make it go to gas. And this is going to produce an electric fault. So I've turned the electric off. I've turned the gas on. 
So we'll go back to the home, back into room climate, and we've asked it to go fast. Now, what it'll find out in a wee moment is this will come up with a fault code because I've turned the gas off and I'll show you how to clear it. Here we have one of the codes, etc., that, that comes up. Uh, and as I say, this has come up because I've turned the gas off. I'm going to press OK. Uh, and if I look at here, it's obviously coming in gas. Uh, and once I go back out and turn the gas on, I can go back in and clear this fault. Now, to clear the fault, you can see everything's turning red up here. The wee bars are all turning red. So we've got a, an issue with here. I'm going to get notifications is where the faults are and it tells me there's one notification gas cylinder empty etc etc so just click on it now this screen here it's a scroll screen so you need to use your finger and go right up to the top and i'm going to turn the gas back on and once i turn the gas back on make sure that that's back on or i've changed the gas bottle because that could be another reason why it's out of gas i will then declare the issue resolved i've now put the gas back on I'm going to go back into notifications gas cylinder empty etc or the gas isn't turned on click and scroll up and I've now turned the gas on declare issue resolved error reset press home to reset and all you do is press the home button and it goes down through a countdown error was reset okay go back in uh, there's now there's no notifications so I can go back into the home screen, back into room climate, and the heating will have no faults and it's on gas. Exactly the same thing happens if I'm on electricity and I haven't turned on at the site. Uh, it's, the electricity is not coming in, you won't get heating uh, coming through the electricity. The same fault happens, you just need to get into the home screen where it says notifications and it'll talk you through it and what to do and how to reset it. When leaving the motor home, um, if you're going out for the evening, obviously you want to turn everything off. So turn off, and you can turn most devices off, uh, and you can put on standby. And over here, it completely turns everything off. You can shut it down. Now, one of the biggest things you need to do is shut the system down fully if you're moving your vehicle. Even although you're only going to move it six feet because you're not quite part properly on your pitch, it will end up sending a fault code to the heater if you've not turned it, the heating off totally. So I'm going to shut this down like that. And once you get shut. water into the vehicle, the water pump, you need to turn the water pump on. Simply press this button here and the water pump fires up. Uh, but I've not got any water in this vehicle just now because it's brand new. Uh, so I'm going to switch it back off. But you, you need that for the water pump and everything to work. The main bit of advice I have to give you is if you're on an electric pitch and for some reason you can't get the electric to work, uh, i.e. the sockets aren't working for the 12 volts, say for instance you've got a hairdryer, etc. The heating won't run on electric. You need to make sure this white symbol here is the two-pronged socket. That needs to be on and that means you're definitely plugged in on site. If that's not on, chances are the fuse where you've plugged into on site is tripped or it's not turned on. One of the most important thing is check that first and make sure you get that on and everything will work in electric on your vehicle. Uh, most of the, the motorhomes are actually fitted with the Vision Plus televisions. Uh, the other televisions that's in the motorhomes, they're all much the same. Uh, they work the, the, much the same way. And today I'm just going to show you how to uh, get the televisions working because some of the kids might go, want to watch TV um, yourself uh, or the good lady. Um, but anyway, let's, let's show you how to do it simply. Remote control, pick it up and press the power button to turn it on. All the vehicles are fitted with automatic aerials, so you don't have to try and uh, aim the aerial to a certain direction to try and uh, get a good signal. As you can see, we don't have a signal just now because we've not tuned it in. So we're on site, we're trying to get a television signal. What I want to do is press menu on the remote control and you'll see auto tuning at the top. Using the down arrow, bring it down to auto tuning and press OK. You'll see up here, it says DTV. That's important, it says DTV. Uh, you can change the types to ATV, DTV or both. Uh, my recommendation is just pressing the, the right hand arrow just so it comes on to DTV uh, and then 
bring it down the arrow to the country um, of your language and press OK. At this point, the television starts to go through and searching for channels. Um, it starts off at channel 21. It'll take about five minutes, maybe 10 minutes to go right through the whole programming and uh, I'll come back to you in a wee minute once it's tuned in. Uh, another thing with the television, uh, if you actually are struggling working the television and it's not trying to tune in properly, you might find you don't actually have a signal in the area where you are. Uh, but we did have at one point um, a customer had uh, the vehicle uh, and the previous customer had tried to get satellites and uh, from beyond space, uh, etc., to make it work. Uh, so if you're simply, you simply think that there's an issue, it can't find satellites or it's, it's, it's trying to get on a different satellite than it actually should, simply go into the menu and you can see all the up the very, very top all these settings, so you're going to press the right hand arrow, picture it goes through the mute and then over to the clock, and then you'll see the square button. What you want to do is do a reset. Bring it down and do a reset to the television. And are you sure? And press yes again. And that's the television resetting back to factory uh, setup, which will take you right back to the very beginning and obviously just go through English, automatic standby, you're okay with that. TV connection type is DVTV, so you're okay with that. Please ensure the aerial's plugged, which it is, and press OK. And it'll automatically go back to the channels and start to retune your channels. And hopefully, um, if it was that the previous customers maybe would try to get other satellites from elsewhere, um, that will get, start you getting the channels again but what you might find is you just are in an area uh, especially in the north of scotland it's a 50 50 chance well whether you get a television channel or not every motorhome is actually fitted with a, a tetford toilet system the system's quite good it actually can turn depends on the motorhome if you're needing a wee bit more room you can turn it around etc um this is the in the closed position just now and to open and flush that's the plug. What you do is do that for about two or three seconds and then put it back into the closed position. Um, most of the, uh, what I would usually tell everyone is fill the bottom up with about that much water. And to get water into the toilet, this is your button here. Hold that for about two or three seconds. Water will start coming in and stop it as I say when it gets to about there. So that's you got your um, toilet ready. It just stops any smells. Not that there is going to smells come through. There shouldn't be anyway. Um, and that's you got your toilet like your house. So to use the toilet, simply do your needs. And once you do your needs, please close the lid after you. Because what one of the things I was finding uh, when you're leaning down to flush the toilet, sometimes you can get splash back. And the last thing you want is getting splash back. So keep the lid closed. Uh, open it up. And that's it flushed away. Give it a wee flush there for two or three seconds, close the box, uh, open it up and press the wee button again here and fill it up with about that much water just at the bottom. Uh, when the system is full, at the back here, it's like a wee green light at the moment and it generally turns a pinky ready colour when the box is actually getting full. My recommendation is keep an eye on the box. Uh, Watch it doesn't get too full because when you come to empty it, it could slush about everywhere and the last thing you want to do is uh, get in a bit of a mess uh, with the uh, toilet. Um, the toilet as well, uh, last thing I will say is if you're on site, try and use the toilets on site. Um, one of the reasons I say why is you will end up running back and forth, emptying your toilet, your chemicals, etc. You could be doing that maybe two or three times a day if everyone's using the, the toilet in the motorhome. My recommendation is use it in the morning when you get up and at night before you go to bed. Uh, in other words, use the, the, the toilets uh, facilities and use this as a secondary. But by all means, it works perfectly fine. You can use it all day long, but it just means you're actually having to run and empty it most of the time. Uh, now we're on to the ovens. All the ovens and the grills and the hobs are the same in all the roller teams and it's more or less in the same format. So lift the, the lid uh, and turn the gas, you hear the gas kicking away, turn the knob and it lights, uh, like so, and the same for the other three. Switch off, just turn clockwise and that's them off. Down to the oven, it's fairly straightforward. 
open the oven, push it in, turn it clockwise to get the grill to come on and click away and it may take a few clicks to get the gas through before it actually lights. lights. So you just release and it, it, that's the grill. Look. One of the things with the grill is a safety precaution. You can close the, uh, the door to here, but if you close the, the door completely, the grill will go out. It's a safety design, uh, so it doesn't uh, heat up the glass, uh, etc. too, at the top. Um, as you can see, due to safety, it's been out. Uh, to get the oven, turn anti-clockwise, ignite, and release. And that's it. And of course, obviously with the oven, you can close the, the door with the oven. It's just not the grill. One of the things we ask is when you return the vehicle, you might have a 11 o'clock return time. What we ask for is the vehicle, the keys handed over at 11 o'clock, i.e. you've vacated the vehicle, you've filled it up with fuel and we hand the keys over at 11 o'clock. It's one of these bummers, I hate asking, but we've got customers who's going on holidays well behind you and we've got a wee tight schedule to try and get everyone in and out and we'll try and accommodate, as you probably know yourself, we'll try to accommodate everyone with time schedules and if we can keep to them time schedules, that would be fantastic. One of the big things we have to help everyone uh, operate their motorhome is an Amazon Fire Pad. Uh, we will have that in your vehicle and should you need help with instructions on how to use your vehicle, any fault codes that come up, um, please open the pad and uh, have a wee check at the videos. To access the videos, uh, you go and press the Photos app and that will take you uh, to all the videos we have on how to use the motorhome. Here is one of the Fire Amazon Fire pads. Uh, as you can see, it's covered in writing. <laughs> um, click the button at the top to turn on. To access the videos, swipe up and you'll see the icon Photos. And up comes videos, quick guides on heating system, etc. And that should help you should you come across any problems or forget how to use some equipment. If it's possible to ask the, the uh, pads that we would do provide in the motorhomes, if you don't mind, if uh, you don't use them uh, with the kids or anything like that, just in case they get broke, uh, they're really just in the, the motorhomes just for instructions on how to work the vehicle. Thank you very much. Vehicle speed limits, you'll notice in the drop down sun visor. The speed limits are there for your vehicle. In the 590, the compact luxury liner, the bed drops down as such by pressing the button. Now you can see over on the, over at the back there, I'm just going to point to it just now, that's chocks. The bed uh, generally comes down, it's not to come down any further than that. So once you get your bed down, take it down till it stops on it. But the most important thing is, don't let it sit in the chocks. Rise the bed back up, but another couple of inches so it's off the chocks. Because what happens is the bed breaks over in the right hand side, the wee chocks, um, they start to come off the wall because there's too much weight on top of the chocks. So all you need to do is bring the bed down uh, and, and to a certain point and then raise it back up. There's a couple of inches just up here to spare and that'll stop the bed getting broken. In most of the motor homes, the headrests don't actually uh, move or come off. Uh, watch what you're doing. Don't stand on the headrest if you're going up to the bed above. Um, and don't try not to pull it off uh, because they're not really secured on that well. They're on the wall. They're on the, the, in the right place just now. And just be careful uh, you don't pull them off. One of the biggest pieces of advice I could actually give you is driving the longer versions of the motorhome, i.e. the 7.4 uh, meter motorhomes, which is the 746, the 740 and the 696. Uh, their wheel spa uh, sorry, back axle is, is quite short for the length of the vehicle. As you can see, there's a fair bit of meterage at the back end. And how I'll explain it to you is if you were driving along and there's a petrol station on your right hand side, and you nipped into the middle lane to turn right into the petrol station. Um, 
if you try and turn from that middle lane into the petrol station, your big bum at the back end here will swing out into the other lane. If you did, if you did turn your steering lock lock full to the right hand side, uh, so you need to watch that. Also, when you're coming to car parking uh, in town centres, for instance, these vehicles you can't really just go in and take a wee tight in because your back end when you're coming into the car parking space will, excuse the how I'm doing this, but your big butt will come in and swing right round when you start to straighten back up again. Um, I hope, hope that gives you a wee bit of advice on how to drive them, but as I always say, just watch your big bum. It's like a big giant bumblebee and just imagine it on your bum and you're trying to drive them. Now that you've seen the videos, it's time to go on holiday. Super exciting. Um, any questions, just ask any member of staff that is round, round about. Uh, every member of staff will be more than happy to help you. Uh, so let's get moving, let's get you your keys. Uh, we'll get the paperwork signed and off we go.